Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and hope everyone had a great holiday or some form of a break. Um, nice easy one for 2023 to kick things off with. I've got an old computer that I've dug out of storage and the relics of piles of crap that I've got lying around. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's my old university uh, gaming machine. That's um, started life as just a plain old office PC. Uh, nothing extravagant, had a lovely beige case, um, not very exciting, um, but yeah, I turned it into something a little bit different. This machine itself has been sitting around for quite a number of years, of course, with all the other machines I've got. Uh, this one sort of got left alone a fair bit. It needs a really good clean, uh, so we're going to crack into it soon and uh, give it a good clean out because the uh, mice sadly used it as a bit of a home, it seems, or at least walked on top of it. Uh, with the shot of the back of my head here, great filming, I just need to disassemble the parts out of the machine because um, it kind of needs to be broken down in such a way to get at all the covers and things like that. Uh, the case itself is not very easy to work on, it's all kind of held together as a uh, sort of one whole unit, so um, yeah, it gets quite flimsy uh, when you start pulling things out of it. The side panels make up most of the structure inside of it. Um, we'll go over the parts later on in a little bit because uh, there's a few nice little things in here but uh, I'm going to start with just getting everything out of the case, uh, get the motherboard out and things like that. Um, but yeah this was my main um, gaming machine and um, yeah served me well for many years over the time of studying um, out of town and later served as a bit of a uh, work um, PC at my first uh, IT job. I think this was taken around 2010. I used to run uh, like Windows 7 and XP on it. I got Windows 7 through my uh, study course that I was doing. Uh, so yeah, got a free upgrade um, to Windows 7. But yeah, I'll just finish vacuuming all the turds out of this thing um, and give it a good wipe down because it, uh, it needs it very badly. I'm pretty much just using some Ajax kitchen cleaner, you can find this sort of at any supermarket around New Zealand or Australia probably, but yeah, and some paper towels to soak it all in, um, nice and juicy, got some <laughs> alcohol to put on top of it as well to try and just kill uh, any bacteria that's sort of kicking around on top of this thing and uh, also went to town inside of the case as well. Any sort of flat surface, I uh, went around it with a paper towel and some cleaning agent to try and make sure I killed anything that was in there. Uh, but yeah, as I said, um, so when I was in university, I had this machine. I bought it for about $200 off Trade Me. Um, ended up um, finding the case off a friend, uh, Mark. He had this and then um, yeah, swapped everything over. Got a new graphics card for it, hard drive upgrade, second DVD ROM, and just kind of spec'd it out on a bit of a budget, really, just to see what I could get out of it. And uh, yeah, the machine turned out to be pretty good for a Pentium 4 around 2009. Um, and just fitting in the power supply bracket as well. This, um, as I said, it's all held together. 
in a kind of a strange way. It's got this little step that it, the power supply sits on to take some of the load. Of course, it relies on having all the side panels in. Speaking of which, I'm just going to give them a quick brush down with some more cleaning agent, paper towels on both sides. This is the motherboard side and the fan side as well. Um, yeah, this uh, wiring here is twisted and taped. <laughs> I'm not saying that's uh, my proudest work, but I uh, definitely didn't have a soldering iron to hand when I did that. So, yeah, it's kind of been like that. It's kind of funny looking back on some of these upgrades and things that you do to machines over the years. The case came with those fans installed. Motherboard is an Intel uh, Micro ATX board. It's actually been a very reliable and stable board. I only had to replace one capacitor. It's the brown one on the right there. Um, wasn't a hard job. Um, I believe it's some sort of Intel. Oh, I forget what sort of chipset it is. I'll put it up here on the screen. Motherboard model is D865GLC and they make a full ATX version as well. RAM, um, well, it didn't boot. This machine doesn't post currently, so I had to put in a bunch of memory into it. Um, it looks like when I last had this machine out, I just threw in whatever sticks I had kicking around, so uh, explains why the machine doesn't post currently. Yeah, it turns out I had no idea what um, dual layer, uh, just sorry, dual channel memory was or anything like that, so yeah, we got a mixture of like 512 meg sticks. Uh, the graphics card is the real star of the show, it's an AGP card, but it's a 7600 GT, 256 megabytes of DDR3 memory on board. This must be sort of in the very last run of AGP cards for NVIDIA. Um, but yeah, it's got some legs on it, despite being AGP. It was a fantastic card, and I think I paid like almost next to nothing for it, because everyone wanted PCI Express. Sounds handled by the boring Sound Blaster Live, I think I just left in there. I used to use the onboard sound fair bit as well, but really like having the dedicated uh, sound card. I'm gonna just sort of bench test the machine by slotting some memory in, you know, it's all mixed up and mismatched, so I had to kind of undo a lot of the work that I did, and uh, sadly I wished I had some more memory at home, I might have some more in storage, but yeah, I had a hard time getting the machine to post, um, but after a bit of trial and error, I managed to find a memory combo that worked, uh, even though it was only um, one and a half to one gig of RAM, I managed to get it all going, and of course not in dual channel. Uh, but yeah, RAM test all passed fine, so I think we'll move on to doing some more of the maintenance items, because as I said, it's been sitting around for, at this point, 13 years. Um, I pretty much stopped using it after 2010. I uh, got a gaming laptop and kind of moved to that, but do the thermal paste on the Pentium 3, the 3 gigahertz one um, with hyper threading. Um, but it's actually quite a good CPU for a Pentium 3. Uh, sorry, 4, sorry. It runs quite warm, uh, so yeah, fresh thermal paste will definitely help that out. And I really don't like these clips that Intel used on these coolers. It's the um, standard um, Intel Pentium 4 cooler for this generation. Uh, it feels like it's going to break in half every time you have to clip it together. Graphics card definitely needed doing. My god, it is uh, pretty bad. You can see all the dirt and dust around the die. Ugh, not good. Turning my attention over to the case now, um, I kind of accidentally pulled out one of these uh, standoffs for the motherboard because I had cross-threaded a screw um, into the standoff, so it's, it kind of pulled out, but you know, to avoid putting too much torque on it, I um, put some Loctite on there and tightened it down as much as I could without stripping the Perspex case. Uh, but yeah, now that the sides panels and the case is all kind of cleaned up, I've scrubbed down, it's safe enough for me to put the machine sort of back together. As I said, this thing is really flimsy without its side panels on, it moves around. You would have seen that while I was scrubbing the top of the lid. Uh, but yeah, just went around and tightened everything just a little bit, just to make sure it wasn't going to come loose on me, because as I said, the whole thing relies on being put together.
At this point in the game it's pretty much just sit back and we're going to put the machine back together and throw in some um, nice little upgrades along the way but yeah we'll get it all put back together as it was. Digging out of my sort of pile of parts that I have kicking around, I've got this pretty new 500 gigabyte Western Digital Black monster hard drive here, 7200 RPM. Um, very quick, sort of, well, that's what they market them as, um, sort of drives, but the same capacity as the one I had in there. It's just, this was just sitting around, not doing anything. So, you know what? And it goes, really. The screws are really annoying to work with, the thickness of the Perspex or plastic uh, means that non-standard screws are used, they're really hard to find good lengths for, um, so yeah that took me uh, quite a while actually to go through my bucket of screws to try and find something that would make the um, hard drive bolt in or screw in to place, but yeah. Trying to do some nice cable management as well because it is a completely see-through case so I found this nice little short uh, newing box um, SATA cable. Power supply situation, I kind of just grabbed anything that I had spare kicking around so I've got this 500 uh, watt sort of random brand. It works fine, I've been using it as sort of like a test power supply on a number of machines. Um, you notice the big screws that I'm putting in here, they were far too long um, but they're the only ones I had to make the power supply bolt in place. I don't know what happened to the original screws but uh, so what I did was I just put some rubber grommets, you'll see them on the very corners there of the power supply and then some washers to try and hold that in. Uh, but yeah, other than that it's nice and safe so it's not protruding too far into the case. Time to sort out that horrible wiring, get rid of the twist and tape from, um, you know, what do you call it, 18 year old Mitch. So we'll do it properly, put some heat shrink on the cables, solder it down, and then uh, it's right as rain.
With the side panel all buttoned up, it's now time to put a fresh copy of Windows on this machine. It needs a nice, fresh, squeaky clean rebuild, so I went with my uh, box copy of Windows XP Service Pack 2. I just left it on Service Pack 2 just because why not? Um, with the lower amount of memory, um, it's kind of nice having the, you know, Service Pack 2. It runs a little bit resource um, light. <laughs> if that makes sense. It uses less resources than what Service Pack 3 or the Aftermarket 4 would probably use. Um, I should really update it to get some more better compatibility, but you know what, it works just fine, so throw that in there, get it all rebuilt. Could have gone with Windows 7 like I had it, but I'd really like to try and squeak in um, 4 gigs of RAM. Don't you love the sound clipping there? Windows loves to crank the volume right up by default when it first builds. But yeah, and the install process went really well, really easy. So happy with that. Got my one and a half gigs of RAM, Service Pack 2, of course. Got my graphics card driver all set up, ready to rock and roll. Um, got a heap of games installed. But um, yeah, we'll crack into some benchmarking, some games, give it a good run for its money. But um, Pre-warning that my capture setup kind of changed over the holiday and I did something and it looks terrible but I'll fix that up later. Uh, but yeah, start off with some Microsoft Flight Sim from a nice Glenorchy flight to Queenstown. Really needed a joystick with this one. Hands up if anyone would like to go for a flight with me. Wow. Half-Life 2, this is the Steam 2 version. Sorry, Steam version of Half-Life 2. Um, plays pretty good, not too bad. A little bit of a drop here and there. This is still at 1024 by 768. 
I've got a few graphical glitches though, the flashlight kind of doesn't really work in dark areas and I'm missing the HUD for my health, things like that, but otherwise the uh, game seems to play just fine. V8 Supercars Australia 3, or however it's um, pronounced, sort of the box just has it as it is, but yeah, always a good fun game, seems to play just fine, I couldn't get my FPS counter going here at the top, but um, yeah, a lot of fun, physics in this game are actually pretty good as well for the time, I always enjoy getting this one out.
can't cut corners like that. Quick 4, it's probably not the greatest game ever made, but um, yeah, had a bit of fun with it anyway. Um, yeah, gets pretty decent FPS until you're outside, you'll probably see it do uh, drop around to 30 uh, FPS here and there, you'll be able to see that in the top left, but um, yeah, otherwise is playable, uh, once again at 1024 by 768. stapled favorite of mine that I used to play all the time on this machine as well as trying to play a bit of GTA 4 cheekily San Andreas um, even with the frame limiter off it seems to struggle a little bit might be down to my driver version the V-Sync is also doing some pretty strange stuff otherwise perfectly playable normally you'd play with this game on the uh, frame cap because I believe they do some weird things with the physics if it's um, the frame limiter is off but yeah other than that, runs like a dream and uh, plays as it should. Hey, you want this to get uglier? but does it run crisis it does at low settings still <laughs> uh, it is playable it's not very fast but i suspect when you come into more dense areas and things like that it will really start to struggle um, but yeah i mean like if this was your only machine um, it is technically playable so uh, it's got that for it at least so I suspect with maybe some dual channel memory it might, might get a little bit faster, we'll see.
I read additional KPA headed your way. Take it off! Show you, sir! John, this! Well, that wraps this one up i uh, really just wanted to get this thing out of the storage unit get it cleaned up you know get it fired up i don't like my uh, equipment just sort of sitting around for too long so yeah i had a lot of fun putting it back together and um, a lot of good memories and a lot of mods and things done to this thing over the years it's definitely a product of its time as you would say um, but yeah it's cool that it's still with me and um, you can still fire it up have a good game session on it and um, yeah still got some legs but uh, yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, we'll catch you guys soon for another fun project